in trouble and you need someone to help you out there's no need to whistle and there's no need to shout hey 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 help is on its way call the koala brothers call the koala brothers call the koala brothers call the koala brothers help is on its way Looks like someone's had a birthday party. But judging by those tired old balloons, it was a little while ago. Poor Ned. He was expecting a birthday present from his Auntie Mavis, but it still hadn't arrived. Ned's birthday was days ago. I know, and still no present from Auntie Mavis. I'm sure it'll turn up. Auntie Mavis is Ned's favourite aunt. Auntie Mavis is Ned's only aunt. That's true. Ned? Huh? You home, Ned? <sighs> G'day there, Ned. George! Hi, Hi George. George! Hello, all. Brought something, have you? Yeah, a special parcel for Ned. There you go, Ned. Oh, my present! It's arrived! Thanks, George! Sorry, it's a, it's a bit late, Ned. I hope you haven't been waiting. I got a bit caught up and... Uh, Open it, Ned. Go on, let's see what it is. Oh, a model plane. Wow. 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 That's some present, Ned. Oh, what's this? That's the remote control. Oh, I knew that. I know all about model planes. Hey, Ned, can I help you build it? I don't think so. Thanks, Buster. Oh, maybe you'd like me to show you how to fly it. I could easily do... No, it's OK, Frank. Can I help you paint it, Ned? Please? No, thank you, Mitzi. I don't need any help. But it's more fun if you do things together, isn't it, Frank and Buster? Well, I reckon. I don't think so. Auntie Mavis always sends great presents, but this is the best yet. Well, <clears throat> Better get on with it. Bye, all. Oh, is this the right way up? Before long, Ned realised that maybe he didn't know as much about model planes as he thought, especially when it came to building them. I'm really good at gluing things, Ned, if you need any help. No, thank you. <laughs> Although Ned was finding things difficult, he was determined to do everything himself. Ooh. 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 I'm really good at attaching things if you need a hand, Ned. No, thank you. Ned still didn't think he needed any help, especially now as everything was starting to fall into place. Oh. Well, almost. Oh. I'm a really good painter. Maybe you'd like me to help you paint your plane? No, thank you! And Ned certainly didn't think he needed help when it came to painting the plane. <coughs> I reckon it would have been fun to help. Hmm. All finished. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Ned's better at flying planes than he is at painting them.
fill her up, please, Josie. Sure, Sammy. Oh, look! Oh, yes. Ha-ha! How splendid! It's either a big plane very far away or a tiny plane very close up. I think it's a tiny plane very close up. Sounds like Ned's having a great time with his plane. Yeah, a great time. I wish I was having a great time with Ned's plane. Me too. Ah! Ned, what's wrong? Look at that. Run, Ned! Ned? Sorry, Ned. Doesn't look too good, Frank. Certainly doesn't, Buster. But I reckon we can put things right. I'll help. Good, Mitzi. <sighs> you okay, Ned? It's my plane. I broke my plane. It'll never fly again. Yeah, it's not looking too special. Still, we might be able to do something to help. You could mend it. No, I'm pretty sure we can. But we'll all have to work together. Me, Buster, Mitzi. Me too. Can I help? Of course you can. It's good to let people help sometimes, Ned. Mm. And we'll show you how. Yeah. And so everyone got to work. With everyone working together and helping each other, Ned's plane looked better than ever. The next day, they couldn't wait to try it out. What a day! Oh, what a night! Right, Ned, you'd better go and see how it flies. Yeah, thanks, everyone. It's okay. Anytime, Ned. After all, we're, we're here, here to help! help. Frank? Yes, Ned? What is it? I wonder if you could give me some flying lessons for my model plane. If you think you need them. <sighs> I think maybe I do. And some for Mitzi, too. For me? You mean I can fly a plane, too? Yeah. And Frank and Buster. I reckon it'll be more fun if we all have a go. Sure thing, Ned. Yeah! <laughs> And so Ned realised that sometimes it's not a bad idea to accept help when it's offered, especially when you have friends like Mitzi and the Koala Brothers. It's a beauty, Ned. <laughs> One beautiful morning, Mitzi was feeling in a happy mood as she set off for town to do her shopping. Hi, Ned. Hi, Mitzi. Hi, Frank. Hi, Buster. Hi, Mitzi. Off to town. Yeah, I've got some shopping to do. Hmm, so have we. We're having an afternoon tea party today. An afternoon tea party? Oh, can I come? Of course you can, Mitzi. That's if we can be ready by this afternoon. 
Yeah, we've got to finish mending the post box, <sighs> go out on patrol, get to Sammy's store to pick up the things for the party, and then make all the food. Hey, I could get the things you need from Sammy's store. I don't know. We'd need them pretty quick. Are you sure you can do it, Mitzi? Buster, it's... it's a promise. Well, then. You know, a promise is a pretty important thing to make. I know, Frank. I promise I'll get you shopping in time. Well, OK, then. Thanks. Here's our list. No problem. You're a star, Mitzi. <laughs> really? See you soon. Mitzi found that making a promise was easy to do and Bye. seemed to make everyone happy too. Hi, Alice. Oh, hello, Mitzi. What's up? It's my tyre. It's flat. Here, let me help. Thanks, Mitzi. I'm already late for lifeguard duties at the waterhole and I said I'd make a cake for the afternoon tea party at Frank and Buster's. I've got so much to do. Alice, I've just had a brilliant idea. You have? Yeah. Why don't I make the cake for the afternoon tea party? You? But, but will you have time to bake a cake before this afternoon? Time to bake and to decorate an extra special cake. And that's a promise. That's that then. What do you mean, Alice? Well, since you've promised, I know I can rely on you to make the cake. Thank you, Mitzi. Um, the water hole. Oh, yes. Thank you, Mitzi. You're so helpful. <laughs> Mitzi was starting to enjoy making promises. <laughs> now she'd made two. Hi, George. Oh, you look like you're in a hurry, Mitzi. Yep, I'm off to Sammy's shop. Oh, uh, I've got a message for Sammy. I'll tell him for you, George. Well, that's a very kind offer, and I do have all this to deliver, but... I'll do it, George. Oh, I don't know. It's a very important message. I'll get the message to him. It's a promise. Well, if it's a promise, that's a different matter. So George gave Mitzi his important message. Now Mitzi had made another promise. By the time Mitzi got to Sammy's shop, George's message was the last thing on her mind. Hello, Sammy. Oh, hello, Mitzi. Sammy, I need everything on this list right away. It's for the Koala Brothers afternoon tea party this afternoon. All righty then. Oh, it won't be long. I've just got to fix up this display. But I've promised to get back quickly and I also promised Alice that I'd bake a cake for her to take. How about I finish stacking while you get the groceries? Oh, that's very kind, Mitzi. Are you sure you've got the time? I'll get it done in no time at all and I won't leave before I do. That's a promise. Well, in that case, I'd better get started. Right, let's see. One large watermelon. <sighs> oh, silly things. Watermelon. Now, milk, cookies and cream. Oh, oh no! Oh. I can't keep stacking cans, Sammy. I've got to get to Frank and Buster's with the things they need. But you can't just leave it, Mitzi. You made me a promise. Mitzi was starting to realise that a promise is very easy to make, but a lot harder to keep. <sighs> Here, let me give you a hand. <sighs> Phew! Thank you, Sammy. Now, my shopping basket, please. There you go. Is that all, Mitzi? Oh, and I'll need the ingredients for the cake I promised Alice. Quick, Sammy, I'm running out of time. Now, what sort of cake are you planning to make, Mitzi? A quick one? That should do it. Can you get the cups and saucers, Ned? Getting the cups and saucers, Frank. Where's Mitzi? It's time to start getting the food ready for afternoon tea. 
Mitzi did manage to keep her promise to the Koala Brothers, but only just. Here I am. Hi. Hi, Mitzi. Oh, thanks, Mitzi. Just in time. There's lots to get ready. Luckily, Alice is bringing the cake. The cake? Oh, no! Sorry, Mitzi. Was it something I said? No, Buster. It's just that I promised too much. I promised Sammy I'd stack his cans and I promised Alice I'd make her a special cake to bring to your afternoon tea party. But it's too late now. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Mitzi. Um... Frank will think of something. Maybe there is something we can do. Really? Yeah, you get started on the tea things and look after the guests. And we'll sort out the cake. We'll be right back. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Buster. That's OK, Mitzi. We're here to help. Chocks away, Buster! Chocks away, Frank! Get the gate, Ned! I'm getting the gate, Frank! Buckle up, Buster! Buckle up! Soon the afternoon, and Mitzi had worked very hard to prepare the tea party. Any sign of Frank and Buster yet, Ned? Not yet, Mitzi. Oh, but here comes Alice. Hello, Alice. Hello. Hi, Mitzi. How'd you go with the cake? Alice, I'm sorry, but... Hello, all. I I'm not late, am I? Hello, George. Hey there, George. Hi, George. Oh, no. Oh, what's wrong, Mitzi? I promised to give you a message from George, but I forgot. Oh, dear. Was it important, George? Yeah, pretty important. Me old slippers have got a hole in them the size of a tennis ball, and uh, I need you to order me a new pair, Sammy. I'm so sorry, George. And Alice, about your cake. <gasps> They're back! And look, there's Lolly! Hello, everyone! Ah, here you go. What you got under there, boys? Yeah, what could it be? Ta-da! <gasps> Mitzi's extra special ice cream cake. Ooh. Thank you, Mitzi. It's so special. Oh, you should really thank Frank and Buster and Lolly. They helped me keep my promise. So things had turned out all right this time, thanks to the Koala Brothers. But Mitzi learned that making a promise was a very important thing. Thanks, everyone. No worries. That's all right, Mitzi. And from now on, I'll only make a promise if I know I can keep it. And that's a promise. Yay! <laughs> so, who's for cake? Oh, yes, oh, yes. 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 Oh, oh, yeah, oh, I have a big stick, thanks. One starry outback night, when everyone else was asleep, Ned the Little Wombat was tucked up in bed reading. As the leaves rustled and the trees creaked in the wind, he imagined he was on a pirate ship sailing across the sea. Before long, Ned was fast asleep, dreaming of pirates and buried treasure. The next morning, Ned decided he was going to be a pirate. And the first thing he wanted to do was bury some treasure. <laughs> Morning there, Ned. Nice hat you got there. Arr, thanks, George. Uh, now, uh, let's have a little... Uh, ah, one for you this morning. Arr, thanks. What's in the box, Ned? Treasure. All my bestest, most favourite things in the whole wide world. You don't say. Yeah. There's my favourite picture of Frank and Buster and Mitzi and me. That's me. See? Uh-huh. And Teddy, my bestest friend. And my alarm clock. My jar of rocks. Yo-yo. Oh, my bendy toothbrush. I love brushing my teeth. And all my other stuff. Ooh, ooh. I see. 
That's fascinating, Ned. But what are you going to do with all this treasure? I won't tell you, George. Mm, sorry, it's a secret. See you later. Arr. <laughs> right you are, then. <laughs> Morning, Ned. Morning, Ned. Morning. And it's Pirate Ned. Aha! What's a pirate doing in these parts? I can't tell you. It's a secret. But it might have something to do with burying some treasure. Shh. We won't tell anyone, will we, Frank? No. Good luck, Ned. What's he doing? It's pirate work. It's secret. Ah. Oh. <coughs> so Pirate Ned mm. found a spot in the outback <coughs> and dug a big hole. <coughs> big enough to bury his treasure in. Ha-ha! No one will find my treasure here. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. <coughs> and so he'd know where it was, he put a large pink rock on top <coughs> to mark the exact spot. Trouble was, there were a lot of pink rocks in the outback. Hey, Ned! It's Pirate Ned! Oh, sorry, Ned. Do you want to play? Pirates don't play, Mitzi. They do important things. Can I be a pirate, Ned? Can I dress up too? Can I, please? Can I have the patch? No, it's my patch. I suppose you can have my sword if you promise you won't break it. Oh, great. So, what piratey things are we going to do? We could go dig up some buried treasure. Treasure? Where are we going to find that? Well, I just buried all my favourite things in the outback. Under a big pink rock. Why'd you do that? I read it in a pirate book. Oh. Well, let's go find it then. Hey, Frank! Buster! Ned and I are going off to dig up some buried treasure. No! Shh! Righto then. Okay. Let's go. Come on, Ned. It's Pirate Ned. So, where'd you bury the treasure, Ned? Arr! I'm the one who says arr, Mitzi. Arr! Let's have a look at the map. The map? Yeah. You have to have a map, Ned, to tell where you buried the treasure. Well... I don't have a map. So, how are we going to find it? I buried it under a rock. Which one? Uh, uh, I don't know, Betsy. I don't remember. Oh, Ned. Oh. Hey, don't worry. I'll help you find it. Back at the homestead, Frank and Buster were getting ready to go out on their daily patrol. Mitzi and Ned aren't back yet, Frank. I know, Buster. We'd better go and have a look for them. Get ready for takeoff. Oh, it's no good. There's too many rocks. Just keep looking, Ned. I buried all my favourite things, Mitzi. Teddy, my clock, my photo. We've got to find them. I think we're going to need some help. Look! Down here! Right, you two. What seems to be the problem? I buried my treasure under a rock and I don't know where to find it. Oh, yeah, and we've looked under a million rocks and I'm beat. Uh, it's a problem, Frank. A big problem, Buster. Too big for just us, I think. We're going to need some extra help. Right, you stay here. I'll be back soon. Turn over and step forward. Before long, Frank had brought all the help he could find. In the outback, whenever there was a big problem, everyone wanted to help. Ah, nothing like a spot of helping, eh, Alice? Turn over. Ah, I say, I, I think you looked under that one already, Alice. Oh, have I? Oh, silly me. Now, let's have a little look-see. Nope, nothing. I always say, the outback's a big place with a lot of rocks. Don't I, Josie? Yes, Sammy. Wouldn't want to lose something out here. <sighs> OK, everyone, I think it's time for a break. <sighs> Are you all right, Ned? 
What'll happen to Teddy if we don't find him, Buster? He'll be getting hungry. We'll find him. And I need my clock. I can't sleep without my clock. I'm sure Frank will think of something. <sighs> what we need, Ned, are some clues. Do you remember anything about where you buried your treasure? Like what? Uh, like, uh, was it uh, near a fence? Mm, no, but it, it was... It was right near a big tree. Ah, that's good, Ned. Well done, Ned. Anything else? Um, I remember seeing Sammy drive past, so it must have been near the road. The road. That's good. Yeah. And, and, and I could see the town from where I was digging. The town. Well done, Ned. Good well on, Ned. done. Yes. Right, everyone. We're looking for a pink rock near a big tree by the road near town. That's where we're going to find Ned's treasure. Come on. Even though they were closer to finding Ned's treasure, <laughs> there were still a lot of rocks to look under. Don't worry, Ned. We're nearly there. All we need is a little bit of luck. Oh, I'm getting a bit tired here. All this looking under rocks. Oh, morning time to get up. Hey, what? Uh, oh, where's that? It's my alarm clock. It's set for my bedtime, and it's coming from over there. I knew it was under that one. I was going to look there next. You found the pink rock, George. I did. I... Oh, well, I was just sitting having a... <gasps> I did. <laughs> Good. <laughs> my treasure chest. We found it. <laughs> oh, thanks, everyone. Thanks for helping. And so, as the stars twinkled overhead, everybody celebrated the finding of Ned's buried treasure. Ned, the next time you play pirates and decide to bury some treasure, it might be a good idea to draw a map to tell you where it is. <laughs> yes, Frank, I think I will. You know, I really was going to look under that rock next. I would have found it. I was this close. <laughs> <laughs> and so all Ned's favourite things were safe again And the Koala Brothers showed that with everyone working together Even the most difficult problems can usually be solved <laughs> On this particular day, Mitzi the Possum was very excited So excited in fact that she ran all the way from the homestead into town Without stopping Cooey! Oh. Hi, Sammy. Hi, Josie. Good day, Mitzi. Hi, Mitzi. Are they here yet, Sammy? Are they? Just let me see. Uh, yep, here they are. Oh, me photos. Thanks, Sammy. You know, Mitzi, you take such good photos. You ever thought of having a show? What? You mean putting the photos up on a wall for everyone to see? Yeah, Josie and I thought we could make a little display over there by the window. Uh, invite a few people, uh, have some sandwiches. That's right. What do you say? Oh, that'd be terrific, Sammy. And I could take some new photos, some really special ones just for the show. So, even more excited than usual, Mitzi went home to get her camera. You're in a hurry, Mitzi. Yeah, can't stop. Sammy said I could put some of my photos up in the store so everyone can come and see them. And you're all invited. That's great news, Mitzi. Which ones are you going to show? I'm going to take some new special ones. <laughs> Mr Bit Ned. Can I come to the show too, Mitzi? Of course you can, Ned. Great. A little later, Mitzi set out to take her new photos. The problem was... What could she photograph that was really special? Hey, Mitzi. Not now, Ned. How's this? How's what, Ned? You said you wanted some special photos for your show. Yeah. So what's so special about that? I'm wearing my best hat. And I clean my shoes. Ned, everyone's going to come and see my photos. I can't just have one of you in a hat. But it's my best hat. Uh. Mitzi! Yes, Frank? Maybe we can help. Hmm? How's this then? A photo of us about to go on patrol. You do that every day, Frank. How's that special? Well, 
It's special to us. Thanks, but I don't think so. See you later. Now, news travels fast in the outback, and before long, everyone had heard about Mitzi's special show and wanted to be involved. You're looking smart today, George. Oh, uh, uh, thanks, Alice. I uh, heard about Mitzi taking some photos for a show, and, and, uh, and oh, here she comes. <laughs> Hi, Mitzi. Hi. I hear you're having a show, Mitzi. Yeah, I'm looking to take some real special pictures, George, but I haven't found any yet. Ah, uh, well, I might have just the thing for you, Mitzi. Yeah? Yeah. I just happen to have my post office certificate here. Oh, George, you are clever. I thought uh, maybe me standing next to the box holding the certificate might make a nice uh, photo. Gee, it's nice, George, but I don't think it's really special enough. Sorry. Uh, oh. oh. I think it's special, George. Oh, here she comes. How do I look, Josie? Good, Sammy. Ah, you're one handsome fella, Sammy, my boy. Oh, there she is. Oh, <coughs> uh, uh, Mitzi, uh, have you got a sec? Yeah, I guess, but I'm on an important job. I'm trying to take some photos from a show, but it's hard. Well, uh, uh, maybe I can help. You're going to love this. <coughs> what do you reckon? What's that? It's a giant, funny-shaped carrot. We thought it'd make a great photo, didn't we, Josie? Uh, us and the carrot. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. mm. Oh, it's nice, Sammy, but I'm looking for something a bit more special. Oh. Is it the carrot, Mitzi? Um, I've got a marrow. No. Uh, thanks, Sammy, but I don't think so. I've been saving this for ages. Hi there, Mitzi. Hi, Frank. Hi, Buster. How are the photos going? Not too good. I don't know what to take. What can you take in the outback that's special? Well, uh, the view's special when you're up in the plane. How about I take you up? Oh, would you, Frank? That'd be great. I've got to be able to take some special photos from up there. Beauty! I'll get the supplies, Frank. <laughs> See you back home. OK. What about one of me and a pineapple, Mitzi? No, thanks, Sammy. Come on, Frank. Are you ready? Uh, ready, Mitzi. So Frank took Mitzi up in the plane to take her special photos. What about that, Mitzi? It's great. Nah, it's just a tree. Oh, uh, how about that? Nah, it's just some rocks, Frank. But Mitzi just couldn't seem to find anything special she wanted to photograph. Coming in for a cup of tea, Mitzi? <sighs> nah, I don't think so. Thanks, Frank. So how'd it go, Frank? Not too good, I'm afraid. No photos. Oh. Are you okay, Mitzi? I guess. Frank, how am I ever going to have a show if I can't take any special photos? What's the most special photo you own? Oh, uh, that's easy. This one. Why is that special then? Because it's got me friends in it, I suppose. There you go. What's special for you is photos of your friends. Maybe that's what you've been missing. Maybe you should take some more pictures of your friends for the show. Oh, you're right. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Buster. We are here to help. Ned! Ned! Uh, yes, Mitzi? How about that photo, Ned, of you and the caravan? And I'll put your photo in my show. I don't think I want my photo taken now, thank you, Mitzi. You said it wasn't special enough. Oh, come on, Ned. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Ned! 
And you upset the others too. Oh, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry, Ned. Please, can I take your photo? Well, all right then. Aren't you going to get your hat, Ned? Your special one? Oh, thanks, Mitzi. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly, Mitzi realised what it was that made a photo special for her. And before long, she had enough photos to have her show at Sammy's store after all. Oh, here they come. Hello, everyone. Time to come in. That's a jolly fine certificate, George. Gee, thanks, Archie. I'm kind of proud of it as it happens. Oh, look at you, Ned. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I'd like to welcome you all to this display of Mitzi's photos. <laughs> and I'd just like to say thanks to everyone for helping me make them special. Well done, Mitzi. Yeah, well done, absolutely. Well, very oh, good. Splendid. So thanks to the Koala Brothers, Mitzi realised that what's special is different for everyone. And for her, the most special things of all were photographs of all her friends. <laughs> Wait for me. Mitzi the possum loved her best friend, <laughs> Josie the little kangaroo, and they played together every day. And today was a very special day. It was Josie's birthday. See? Well, because it's your birthday, I made you a special badge to wear all day. Oh, thanks. It's lovely. Don't forget to meet me down at the water hall after work. Then I'll give you your present and show you what a good friend I am. Oh, I can't wait. Thanks, Mitzi. See you. Mitzi was going to make sure that Josie had the best birthday ever. Mitzi was arranging a surprise birthday party for Josie at the waterhole, but there were still lots to do. Now, watch carefully, Ned. You're making the paper chain decorations for Josie's party. You take each one, lick it, loop it and stick it. Now, you try. Not bad, Ned. Mitzi, hmm? what are you doing? I'm thinking about what to get Josie for her birthday. Well, maybe you could think and make paper chains. No, Ned. You do the paper chains and I'll do the thinking. Hi! Hi, Hi Frank! Hi, Hi Buster. Buster! What are you two up to? Well, I'm making paper chains and Mitzi's, um, thinking? I know. Paper and a pencil. That'll help me think. <laughs> what you doing, Mitzi? Can we help? I'm trying to decide what to get Josie for a present. It's got to be perfect. A present doesn't have to be perfect, Mitzi. It's just a way of showing someone you care about them. No, no, it's got to be the best present ever. So Josie will know I'm her best friend. Here are my ideas. A spinning hoop or a boomerang? What do you think? Those are good ideas. Hmm. Can you two go to the store and find out which one Josie would like best? But don't let her know it's for her present. But shouldn't you ask her, Mitzi? You're her best friend. <gasps> I can't, Frank. I have to get everything ready for the party. Oh, OK, then. We'll ask Josie. After all, we're here to help. <laughs> Hi, Josie. Happy birthday. Thanks. What can I get you? Uh, a pack of biscuits and a tin of Billy Beans, please, Josie. Ask her about the spinning hoop and boomerang, Frank. <clears throat> Josie, do you like spinning hoops? Uh, oh no. Spinning hoops make me dizzy. Oh, then she won't want that for a birthday present. Yeah. Um, oh, can we have some bread, please, Josie? Bread? Uh-huh. Um, 
What about boomerangs? Do you like boomerangs? Oh, yeah, I like boomerangs. Look, here's mine. Oh, she won't want one of those either. I love anything that flies. Boomerangs, planes, kites. Yeah, that's a lovely boomerang. Thanks for the groceries, Josie. Yeah, bye, Josie. Bye, Frank Buster. What are we going to do now, Frank? Back at the homestead, things weren't going too well either. Um, Mitzi, I'm in a bit of a mess. <sighs> We're back! Oh. Hello, Mitzi. Hello, Ned. How are the party preparations going? Oh, all right. Well, I've got some birthday cards for Josie here somewhere. That's great, George. But Josie's party's at the waterhole, not here. Oh. Oh, dear. Don't worry, George. We'll take them over for you if you like. Oh, thanks, fellas. That's OK. How'd you get on? We asked Josie and uh, we found out she doesn't like spinning hoops. Oh. And she's already got a boomerang. Oh, no. Now what am I going to get her for a present? Hey, everybody. Look at me. Not now, Ned. Hang on. That reminds me. Josie said she really likes kites. You could make her one. Oh, great idea. Well done, Ned. No problem. But making a kite wasn't as easy as Mitzi thought. Hi, Mitzi. I've baked a birthday cake for Josie. Where would you like it? Oh, thanks, Alice. But the party's at the water hole. Oh, yes. Silly me. I forgot. Oh, this is never going to work. You look like you could use a hand. Well, OK, then. But you have to do it just right. I'll be watching, you know. No, Buster. Use the red cloth. That's Josie's favourite colour. Oh, right, Mitzi. This isn't just any old present, you know. It's got to be perfect, so Josie will know how much I love her. There we go. That's just about done. That's more like it. I can't wait to give this to Josie. Then she'll see I'm her bestest friend in the whole world. See you at the waterhole. See, see you there. there. A little later, Mitzi was in a hurry to give Josie her present. Oh, ah! Oh, no! Josie's present! Oh, I've broken it. I can't go to the party now. <sighs> Meanwhile, at the waterhole, Josie was about to get a first look at her surprise party. That's it. You can open your eyes now, Josie. <gasps> wow! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Josie! Oh, thanks, everybody. It all looks lovely. I made the paper chains. And I made the cake. Oh, thanks, Ned. Thanks, Alice. Oh, oh. and here are your birthday cards. Oh, thanks, George. Mitzi put everything together for the party. Oh, thanks, Mitz. Oh, where is Mitzi? Yeah, oh, where is know. Mitzi? Mm. Maybe we should go and look for a Buster. Hmm. Down there, Frank. It's Mitzi. Hold on. Hey, Mitzi. What are you doing out here? Josie's waiting for you at the party. I fell over and broke Josie's present. I can't go now. Oh, of course you can. But I wanted everything to be perfect and now it's all ruined. Only the present's broken, Mitzi. You can still go to the party and see Josie. But without the present, Josie won't see what a good friend I am. She might not like me anymore. Of course she'll still like you. It's you Josie wants to see. That's the important thing, not the present. You think so? Definitely. Come back to the party with us, Mitzi. Well, all right then. Oh, mm. Lovely cake, Alice. Mitzi! I'm sorry, 
sorry, Josie. I wanted to give you the perfect present, but I ruined it. Oh, it's all right, Mitzi. It doesn't matter about the present. Presents are nice, but it's you I want at my party. Really? Really? Come and have some of Alice's cake. So, in the end, everyone had a great time at Josie's party. And that day, Mitzi learned that friends love you for who you are, not for the things you give them. Every morning in the outback, Ned the Little Wombat usually wakes up to the sound of his alarm clock ringing, ready to see what surprise the new day will bring. But this particular day, Ned wasn't woken by his alarm clock. That's funny. Something was making a very strange noise. Hello? Who's there? Uh, hello? Mitzi? <gasps> oh, wow! <gasps> a balloon! The balloon looked like a piece of pure sunshine. Ned didn't know where it had come from or how it got there. But he knew one thing. I don't know who this belongs to, but it's mine now. Frank, Buster, look what I found. Isn't it great? I woke up and there was this donk, donk, donk outside. And when I came out to look, there it was. Oh, it's lovely, Ned. Yes, it is. And maybe we should put some notices up around town, see if anyone's lost it. Oh, no, it's mine. Find us keepers. That's the rule. You know, Ned, I'm not sure if Finders Keepers is really fair. Oh, what a brilliant balloon! It's like, like, a little bit of sunshine on a string. Can I hold it, Ned? No, Mitzi. Sorry, it's mine. Oh, don't be a spoil sport. Let me... No. Oh, all right then. Ha -ha! Leave it alone, Mitzi. It's mine. That's not fair. More than all, got a little mail for you here. Thanks, George. Oh, fine looking balloon you got there, Ned. Had one just like it myself when I was a nipper. Let's have a little look, see? Sorry, George. I found it, so I'm the only one who can play with it. Oh. Well, I would have looked after it. We know you would have, George. Ned's just being mean. Uh, <clears throat> um, how about a nice cold lemonade while you're here, George? Don't mind if I do. Thanks. Mitzi? No, thanks. I've got things to do. <clears throat> 23, 24, 25. Phew. Oh, it's a beauty. Mitzi! Oh, come on, Ned. I was only looking. What are you doing? I'm going to put my balloon in a safe place. <sighs> Thanks for the lemonade, Frank. <sighs> Mitzi, are you all right? Ned won't let me even touch his balloon. It's not fair. I know how you feel. I think maybe Ned's just worried that you might let the balloon go by accident and it would get lost. But I said I'd be careful, and so did George. Besides, friends should share things with each other. That night, before he went to bed, Ned made sure that his balloon was safe. He was planning to have lots of fun with it in the morning. Night-night. <sighs> Hello, Ned. It's gone. My lovely balloon. It's gone. Did you take it, Mitzi? Me? What would I want with your silly old balloon? Well, I know you wanted it. I didn't want it. I wanted you to share it. Good day. Oh, come in, George. Do you know what happened to it, George? Um, what happened to what? Ned's lost his balloon, George. Oh, sorry to hear that, Ned, but uh, I haven't seen it. Then there's only one other explanation. Mm. 
must be a gang of balloon thieves in the area. I don't think balloon stealing is very common, Ned. Why don't we come over to your caravan? Maybe we can work out what happened. Good idea, Frank. Ned, was this window open last night? Oh, yeah. I always sleep better with the window open. You know what? I don't think anyone took your balloon, Ned. I think it got caught by a breeze and blown out through here. Well, did you find it? Nah, it's gone. Forever. Don't give up just yet, Ned. Frank will think of something. Uh, we could always organise a search. Really? Would you do that? Of course. We are here to help. I don't see why George and me should help, actually. Ned never shared the balloon with us when he had it. Mitzi? Ah. Uh, all right, then. Right. Buster and I will take the plane up and see if we can spot the balloon from the air. George and Mitzi, you could help Ned search around here. Right. right. Let's go, Buster. Give us a wave if you find anything. So, where do we start? Mitzi, I'm sorry I didn't let you play with my balloon. Ah, oh, that's all right, Ned. And don't worry, we'll find One, it. Uh, two, uh, three. Uh, oh, hello there. You haven't seen hey. a balloon around here, have you, Archie? It's gold, and it looks like a. Uh, well, it looks like a. Uh, like a great big bit of sunshine. Only on a string. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, now you come to mention it, I did see something gold-ish out of the corner of my eye. That'll be it. Where? Um, at the waterhole, up in the old tree. The waterhole? What are we waiting for? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Archie. Ah, Wait for uh, me. One, two. In the sky above, Frank and Buster weren't having any luck searching for Ned's balloon. I can't see it anywhere. Me neither. Hey, looks like the others are heading for the waterhole. You're right. Let's go down and see what's happening. Ah, uh, fellas, over here. I think I've spotted it. Yes, that's it. You found it, George. <clears throat> here, let me try. Uh, oh. George, can you get it? Me? Oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll try. Uh, oh, there you go, Ned. <laughs> Quick, George. <laughs> Come on, George. <laughs> you, nice going, Ned. Hey, that was fun. Yeah, it's the best fun I've had since I found it. Maybe we should all share the bal balloon. Found it. Your balloon? Ooh. Oh, thanks, Ned. I love my balloon. But this balloon isn't yours anymore. It's mine. Sammy gave it to Josie yesterday for all her hard work in the shop. But it slipped out of my hand and blew away. This is definitely the one Josie lost, Ned. But I found it, so it's mine. Finders keepers. Oh. Oh. Uh, Never mind. Ned. What about Josie? What am I going to do? I don't want Josie to be sad, but I love this balloon so much. You know, Ned, there is one thing that would solve this problem. Sharing? You might find that you have more fun that way. But suppose Josie won't share with me. Like, like I wouldn't share with Mitzi and George. Why don't you ask her? And that's exactly what Ned did. Josie, would you like to share the balloon with me? Definitely! Ooh. Well <laughs> done, Ned! So everyone spent the rest of the day at the waterhole, playing with their special balloon. And thanks to the Koala Brothers, Ned realised that by sharing things, he could have much more fun with his friends. You know, there was nothing Ned the Little Wombat liked more on a hot outback day than one of Lolly's nice, cool ice creams. There you go. And this day was really, really hot. Well, Ned, that's your third ice cream in 20 minutes. Well, it is very hot. You can say that again. And according to the weather forecast, it's going to get even hotter. 
Well then, I hope you've got plenty of ice creams, cos I'll be back for more. See you later, Lolly. Bye, Ned. <sighs> Hi, Frank. Hi, Basta. Oh, it's a scorcher. Mmm, you're right. It sure is. Oh, it's a bit too warm, if you ask me. Mm. The sun's getting high now. It'll soon be the hottest part of the day. Have you seen Ned? He went into town early. Town? Oh, I hope he doesn't stay out in this sun too long. <laughs> How are you getting along, Josie? There. That's the lot. Oh, well done, Josie. That should make them stop and look. Look at what, Sammy? What are you doing? Oh, morning, Ned. Oh, we are just putting up a display of all our sun protection supplies. Yes, we've got sun hats, bottled water and sun cream. <laughs> We're going to need them too, I reckon. They say it's going to get even hotter. I'm not worried. Lolly's ice creams are the best thing for keeping cool. Keeping cool isn't the problem, Ned. The problem is the sun's harmful rays. <gasps> Let me go and find you a hat. <gasps> harmful rays? They sound scary. Oh, they are, Ned, they are. You see, the sun is really hot. Sammy, could you give me a hand a second? Oh, excuse me a minute, Ned. Harmful rays, like from ray guns. That's definitely scary. There you are, Ned. This will help. Oh, no sign of harmful rays yet. Ned wasn't exactly sure what harmful rays were, but they sounded really dangerous. He didn't know what to do. What would Frank and Buster do? I know. They'd warn everybody to stay indoors. Hey, I could do that. Of course, I'll tell everybody to stay indoors, away from the harmful rays. Never fear, Ned is here, and I'm here to help. Buckle up, buckled up, chops away, chops away. <laughs> hey, Ned, back for another ice cream? No time, Lolly. I have to warn everyone about the harmful rays. Oh, OK. <gasps> what harmful rays, Ned? Good day, Ned. It's not good, George. It's not good at all. The harmful rays are coming. You have to get inside. No time to explain, George. But you have to go indoors and stay there till I tell you. But, but my deliveries are the, the, the mail. It'll have to wait, George. The harmful rays could be here any minute. Oh, I suppose, if you put it like that. I'll come back and tell you when it's safe. I, um, <laughs> thanks, Ned. Oh. Scooter, Alice. It's too dangerous. I don't understand. My scooter is dangerous? No, it's the harmful rays. They're on oh. their way. You must go inside until they're gone. Oh, but I have to deliver these sandwiches to... It doesn't matter. You have to stay indoors or the harmful rays might get you. I suppose a few minutes won't matter. Thanks, Ned, for telling me about these, um, things. Oh! Ha, ha, ha. Morning, Mr. Ned. What a glorious sunny day. Quick, Archie. Say. You have to hide in the cafe until the harmful rays have gone. Ha, uh, ha. I'm afraid I don't quite follow. It's very important that you stay inside. Alice will explain. And she's got some sandwiches. Oh, well, in that case... Phew. This saving people from harmful rays is hard work. I'm feeling really hot. Would you like another glass of water, Mitzi? I will in a minute, but these flowers need another drink first. What about some more sunblock, Mitzi? That sun's very strong. Maybe you're right, Buster. It's easy to forget when you're busy. Hey, do you think Ned's all right? I thought he'd be back by now. You know, I was just wondering the same thing. It's getting hotter all the time. 
Well, I just hope he's remembered to wear a sun hat and drink lots of water. Hmm. I think we'd better go and look for him, Buster. Good idea, Frank. Ned had been working really hard to make sure that everyone stayed indoors, away from the harmful rays. In fact, the only person now who wasn't indoors was Ned. There he is! And standing under that hot sun, he was starting to feel a bit woozy. <laughs> it's all right, Ned. We're here to help. Oh, hi, Frank. Hi, Buster. Are you OK, Ned? You're not wearing a sun hat. And you don't have any sunblock on. I was just keeping people indoors because the harmful rays are coming. You'd better get inside too. Ned, when was the last time you drank some water? No time for water. Too busy. But now I'm feeling just a little bit... Oh. I think we better get you home, Ned. Ned, wake up, Ned. He's got a funny colour. Oh, you had us a bit worried there, Ned. Yeah, you got a little bit of sunstroke. I was only trying to help, you know, like you do. I wanted people to hide until the harmful rays had gone. The harmful rays don't come and get people, Ned. They're just there. They're just part of the sunshine. They're what made you feel ill, Ned. So, can't I ever go out in the sun again? Of course you can, Ned. The sun's fine most of the time. There's just those few rays that can be harmful if you're not careful. The rules are really easy, Ned. When it's hot, all you have to do is stay in the shade or wear a hat to keep the sun off your head. Wear sunblock to protect your skin and face. And drink plenty of water. Here, I've drawn you a picture so you won't forget. Oh, thanks, Mitzi. But you haven't drawn any ice creams. Don't ice creams help at all? Oh, not really, Ned. Oh. But they can't do any harm. That's all right, then. I love Lolly's ice creams. Well, Ned, I think you can probably get up again now. But I'd stay in the shade for the rest of the day if I were you. Don't worry. I will. I'm feeling a lot better now. Thanks for looking after me, everybody. That's OK, Ned. We're just glad to have you back on your feet. Hello? Anybody home? It's George. George? Oh, no! George! I forgot all about him. Sorry, Ned. I waited as long as I could, but I had to come out or no one would have got their mail. Oh, and I told Alice and Archie they could probably come out too. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Thanks, George. <laughs> oh, look. Ned's going red again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, George. I guess I really messed things up, didn't I? You were trying to do the right thing, Ned, and there's no harm done. This is a nice, cool drink here, George, if you'd like it. Oh, don't mind if I do. Everyone felt proud of Ned for trying so hard to help. And Ned knew that as long as he had his friends around him, he'd remember how to protect himself from those harmful rays in the future. If you're in trouble and you need someone to help you out, there's no need to whistle and there's no need to shout. Hey, 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 hey.